what is up everyone we are back today and we have a special video with a special guest danny from fly girls manifesting we've actually been subscribed to each other for quite a while and recently she's been putting out more and more content stuff like ask formations she has a bunch of really great af affirmations on her channel she's a coach as well and we've talked before but i decided that it would be awesome to have a conversation with her to kind of shed some light on what she's been up to lately and just really kind of get into what's been working for you recently. Um, a lot of people that have subscribed to me came to me from my video about affirmations. And yeah. I know that you've been putting out a bunch of awesome ask, ask formation tracks. So with that being said, yeah, just uh, whatever it is that you've been up to lately, like as far as the affirmations, like what is your take on that whole thing? The robotic affirming affirmations versus ask formations. Okay, well, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for having me on your platform and even offering the invitation to interview little old me. Um, you know, I'm just a, a gal from Tampa, Florida that decided that she wanted to do something significant in the world by using her voice and her spiritual gifts. And it led me to, in the past year, realizing that people want to hear more affirmations or affirmations as they're going to sleep or just kind of like throughout the day they want to be able to have something that calms their nervous system and I was just led to do that through me asking my higher self okay what can I do to just add something to somebody's life what can I do to be a vessel to people who want to be able to relax release and let go so that's how the affirmations tracks happen and also to you know, just being a content creator, I saw that it was something that was starting to be popular. And I'm like, wait, but I've been talking about affirmations for years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, what's not going on in our niche? What's not right. going on that people would like benefit from? And I just decided to do an affirmations track and the rest is history. And I will say that what made it click for me when it came to like understanding about manifestation or just anything that I've learned over the years is that your focus consistently throughout the day is really important. So what can you do to relax your mind in the morning time? Listen to things that will soothe your nervous system throughout the day. Check in with yourself. Understand that what you're thinking about all day, every day is creating your reality. And then at the nighttime, when your body is relaxed and you're going into that state akin to sleep, listen to an affirmation tape or listen to an affirmation tape. But I've learned that like you have to actually focus your energy on the end result throughout the day consistently. And that does require for you to become aware. So awareness is something that I really truly um, would advocate for. That's what made it click is like being aware of what you're doing throughout the day, all day, every day and consistently doing it. Yeah. And aware of those, those kind of recurring thought patterns and thought loops that you get into, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's something that we talk about a lot is like, you know, affirmations are really just another way of describing like self-talk. And mm -hmm. if you are affirming something to yourself, you're kind of giving yourself a new instruction because otherwise, if you're not affirming and choosing what kind of thoughts you want to carry around throughout the day, then yeah. you're kind of allowing your external environment, which tends unfortunately to be mostly negative to inform mm -hmm. that story and so it could be something as simple as something isn't working out at work right or somebody says something rude to you or anything and if you keep on dwelling on those thoughts mm -hmm. you're just going to create more of the same right because that's what we talk about is like what you focus on just like what you just said determines what you experience and what and it determines really like the lens through which you see reality is something that i like to talk about because you can see like everybody has their own distorted view of reality mm -hmm. and some of some people distort it in a positive way. <laughs> some but a lot of right. people distort it in a negative way. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's awesome. And it's really awesome. Like what you're, what you're saying about like what you, you know, being in communication with your higher self, you mentioned, you were like, what can I do that would provide value in a more unique way? What is kind of like something mm -hmm. that's missing in this space right now? And before we got on, on here, you mentioned to me that you have a background in acting and voice yeah. acting specifically. 
And yes. so I think that that's, that's awesome that you can kind of piece together, say, look, what are my kind of like unique advantages is like what some people call these like things um, that are like something that I have that people have complimented me on before, or that people mm -hmm. have noticed about me in a positive way. And then mm -hmm. that kind of leads you to say, okay, well, you know, maybe I can create these recordings for people. Um, and I think that that's been awesome because it's, it's clearly working. Um, you, some of your tracks have, I don't know exactly how many views, but they've, they've gone viral. <laughs> they've gone viral, like really viral. Like when it started happening, I was just like, what? <laughs> because, um, really and truly I create my own subliminal tracks and my own affirmations, you know, for myself and for some yeah. of my kids, but you know, I just really didn't think that it was something that was like. I'm going to do this and it's going to go viral. I was just really more so yeah. like when, it, when I started seeing the numbers go up, I was like, okay, this is something that's missing in the space. And it's something that is important to pay attention to because remember there are people in um, the law of attraction, law of assumption communities that they're taught to, you know, affirm, 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 persist, persist, persist. And that's great. Yes, you should do that. But then what about all the other 70,000 thoughts that you have throughout the day that are getting in the way of your persisting while you have to go to work, while you have to take care of your family and all this other stuff. So what I said is that, okay, if you've gone through eight hours of fighting with yourself, at mm -hmm. least overnight, you can reprogram your mind with a soothing, soothing MP3 track that you can listen to throughout the night. And even in the morning when you wake up, because you know, your, your mind is in that theta state. Mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning so these are just things that i guess the reason and i believe the reason why in my comment section people are getting results is because they actually tried it out for themselves they tried yeah. it and so if you were able to just sit with yourself and focus on consistently your desired reality and it's in greater results but unfortunately like i said things throughout the day are just doing this they're coming up against you so then what better way to kind of soothe your your um your mind with going to sleep with these affirmation tapes? And I think yeah. that's the thing is that you can still like, okay, the day wasn't so good with with thinking all over the place, but at least when I go to sleep, my subconscious mind can be saturated and it'll kind of counteract all the things that I've been going through throughout the day with the inconsistent focus right. on the right reality. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of people have commented, yeah, I see the comments on your channel and then there's other people creating some of these too. And it's just like, it's kind of become a big thing on YouTube recently, um, listening to these tapes overnight. And, it's, and a, lot, a lot of people are getting like real success, you know, reading these comments, which is cool to see. Do you find like specifically with the ask formations that that kind of like bypasses the conscious mind even more because I've, I've heard that one of the benefits to asking the question is like, if you ask a question, your mind can't help but answer it. Right. And so if you're asking, yeah. why do I feel so amazing? You're gonna be like, well, why do I feel amazing? <laughs> Rather than just like telling yeah. yourself you feel amazing and there might be some resistance there. Yes. And I absolutely, um, so I don't remember offhand the, the author that originally Coined yeah, the term I don't either. But I think it was yeah, aff formations. Yeah, I, remember, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. But if you look it up on the back end, it makes sense that remember your subconscious mind is your best friend. Like it's not here to do you any harm. It's here to protect you. And anything that you saturate it with, it's like, okay, well, hey, what's going on here? Okay, we 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 have to figure <laughs> out to make this true. <laughs> so if you're asking a question for something and it's not true yet, your subconscious mind goes to work to make it true. So asking questions act actually in what I found, it releases the resistance mm -hmm. yeah. around like, I am this. You may not believe I am yet, but if you say, why isn't it? Um, so um, if you say, isn't it wonderful or how come I have? When mm -hmm. you're asking questions to your subconscious, it's like, okay, well, we have to make the question become the truth and a fact. And it releases the resistance and it bypasses your conscious mind and it goes straight to the subconscious. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a really neat kind of trick or hack to mm -hmm. just release the resistance and let go of needing to be I am in the beginning right. and go straight to let's make it happen. 
<laughs> Let's yeah, take it. I agree. I agree. I feel like I could like use them more because like I'm I'm big on robotic affirming, um, just affirming in general. But like the affirmation thing, like I I know I've talked, I've like done it. I've done it like just randomly to myself before, and it does feel good because it feels like if I say to myself, we're talking about sales. If I'm like, why am I so good at sales? Then my mind will just have to like come up with reasons to be like, well, first off, like I'm really dedicated to it. Like I'm, I've gone and I've learned this, this, and this. I read this about sales. I've made the effort. I knocked on a hundred doors today or like whatever evidence at the time when I was doing sales, I, my mind will then be forced to come up with all this evidence for it. And I really like that kind of just approach. I think it could be used for other things too. I'm wondering like when, when using it for, let's say being creative mm -hmm. you, like, and, and talking about like your intuition and kind of talking about that whole thing. Cause I, I feel like being creative is this thing and everyone that is creative, including yourself and anybody watching yeah. this, we probably ran into situations where we have like these bursts of creativity. Right. And we're just yeah. like, Oh yeah. Like all these ideas are coming through. Right. And then, all of a sudden, like, yeah, that might happen. That might last for a while. But then it's like, there, there's like a lull and we're kind of just like, okay, like, I'm not sure what to do at this point. You know, they call it writer's block. It could be called anything for any different type of creative work. But I'm yeah. wondering like with the affirmations, maybe that would be a cool tool to use then. Or I'm wondering how you engage, I guess, and speak to your higher self when it comes to finding these ideas to become more creative. Because I've noticed like, Mm -hmm. With your affirming uh, these affirmation videos, like you said, you kind of noticed in the logical way, like, okay, this is something that I feel like could be useful here, but also like figuring out something that resonates with you at the time that you feel like called to almost do, but also that yeah. you feel like is something that people are going to resonate with. And yeah, I guess I'm wondering your take on that. And also if you, if you, you, if you would even use kind of like how you go about that dialogue with your higher self. Or, or finding your intuition. I get what you're saying. So the thing with me, like even you were just saying now, like um, ask formations and re repetition and robotic. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'd be like, why, why, why is my audience loving my videos? Why is everything always working out in my favor? How come I have a beautiful connection with my audience? Why is that? Yeah. Why, why, yeah. why? Why is it that when I wake up each and every day, I wake up to people telling me how much I've changed their lives? Why is that? And so what I found is that when I ask those questions, I get the answers to it's because you tap into the desired reality of what you want to give to the world to be of value. So as a creative person, I love pink. I love purple. Okay, cool. But when I create things, I'm just like, well, how can I create something that is going to be timeless? Like, I don't want it to be a flash in the pan. I want it to be something that 10 years from now. So I go to the end. I live in the wish fulfilled that I'm getting chills even talking about it. I live like literally, I know I see my reality here, but in my mind, when I close my eyes, I see the vision of who I'm touching with my audience in a like projected reality that's really real yeah. to me and it's exciting yeah. to me that that's that's who I am in my mind when I close my eyes it's me but in my 3d reality I'm on the trajectory to knowing that that is my desired reality and so how do I affirm for the people who I'm touching I literally just say I affirm that I have a beautiful connection with my higher self I actually affirm for connection to my higher self. I um yeah. I also love to be able to when I read the comments, I imagine the people that I'm touching like coming back and giving me success stories. Not for my own benefit, but for their benefit. So I become yeah. a certain to people even in my comment section or clients or my, my group membership. And when I talk about how I'm becoming of service to them, I get emotional because it's not about me. Hey, hey. You know, any any type of money or um, any type of, you know, accolades I get, that's fine. 
But when I've tapped into my higher self and trust my intuition, I sit quiet and I'm like, okay, morning routines are very important to me. Nightly routines are very important to me because when you have tapped into, let's just say you want to manifest anything, money, love, SP, anything. But when you sit quiet and you ask your higher self, which is you connecting to the God within you, and just decide to be quiet and listen, maybe in the first two days you won't get any answers. But if you do it consistently, you'll start to get these downloads of like, inspired action or you'll just like some things that you used to do that do not serve you you just won't want to do them anymore so the re the way that I tap into intuition with anything that I do is to create an atmosphere for me to have silence and to focus on my vision for the things that I desire to have did I answer yeah. the question yeah I think yeah you did I mean and that's that's cool. I mean that Neville Goddard talks about like going into the silence, and I think that sometimes there's been there's been tons of different times like throughout my life where I've had kind of like these these like you're you're calling them like downloads, and that's like what I would call them too. And I think they can happen at various different levels, but I think a lot of the time it has it has to do with kind of breaking away this like constant uh interfacing with our outer reality and just kind of just mm -hmm. like going back within and just mm -hmm. focusing our attention inside yeah like in our inner world what do we want to create in our inner world and mm -hmm. that's how we can start tapping into that power and like you said it might not happen right away um there can be other things that kind of aid in that like psychedelics or or different types of even journaling sometimes i, I feel like journaling and and getting your thoughts out on paper too is very powerful oh. like with a pen and paper yeah but well, you know, sometimes what I do, and I'm, I'm not, this is not something that you know is popular in the law of assumption community. But sometimes I'll um, just like light a candle in my room and just be in like silence and like dim light, and I'll just focus on the flame of like you know, because meditation is really about just like focusing on your breathing, or you can focus on like um, a song that you're playing or music. But sometimes I'll just light a candle and I'll just um, focus on the flame. And while yeah. I'm focusing on that flame or if I'm focusing on um, a particular song, while just one thing is playing or my breathing sometimes, I'm able to now circle that back around to my desired reality. Let's just say you want it to manifest. You know how people like to manifest instantly? Or they want mm -hmm. things to come to them quickly? Yeah. The more relaxed you are, the more open you are, the more the, the less distracted you are, I feel like now you can focus your energy towards the thing. And and it takes practice because remember your subconscious mind has programming from different things that you know that you've gone through in your life. But if you just make a decision that I am now reprogramming my subconscious mind for XYZ, whatever yeah. that is. For me, it was business success. For me, it was health at one time. And I just made a decision that I'm going to create time and space and, and focus my thoughts on how would I like to feel if I already had this thing and then allow myself to feel that, register that feeling so that it becomes a norm for my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because yeah, a lot absolutely. of people, I don't, I don't know if you would agree with me, Alice, but a lot of people you know, they want things instantly, but I do agree that there is some point in your manifestation journey or your conscious manifestation journey where just kind of acknowledge that your subconscious mind has gone through so many stages of programming that just acknowledge the fact that it needs to have a consistent, repetitious way of getting the new belief, the new belief that you guys want to have. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like those, uh, like what you mentioned, yeah, that instantaneous thing. I mean, it can be instantaneous that you shift your feeling state. But like you said, if you're re rewriting and rewiring this old programming, I mean, it's, you can't just expect do one meditation session and all of a sudden you're going to start getting all these results like that you haven't felt natural. It's that conditioning, it's that rewriting that kind of that feeling. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, so you just mentioned just now too that like 
one thing you like to do is sit in a room, like watch a candle flame, and that can kind of help you get into that relaxed state. Do you have other kind of go-to practices? Because I think that a lot of people, including myself lately, <laughs> probably we need to first address that whole thing. Yeah, just like calming our nervous system. And because we're in this like fight or flight mode a lot of the time. Yeah. And when you're in that mode, you're ne you're definitely cut off from, you know, your higher self. You're definitely cut off from your intuition. And you're definitely also just, you, you need to, like, re I, I said before, like, relaxation is like a prerequisite to manifestation. And I feel like you can, <laughs> you yes, can, you could argue, <laughs> yeah, you can argue, you could argue that point. I know people like on Reddit or people will always try to find like a, something to disprove something. And I mean, yeah, there's definitely people that have, have done that without probably being in a relaxed state. But for the most part, I've always found that if I'm going to have like a good visualization session, or if I'm even doing anything productive, even if I'm trying to unlock that creativity that we we're talking about earlier, yeah. it's like, I need to relax first because, yeah. so I guess with that being said, do you have other things like other practices that kind of help you get into that? Yeah. Yes, I do. First and foremost, um, <laughs> well, okay, so I, I'm a music person. I love music. So I use music to my advantage. So I have a playlist of things that just make me completely feel like I'm in a different world. Like literally when I put on a playlist, like there's a particular playlist, the lyrics are very important because you don't want them to make you angry or, you know, there's a different yeah. lyrics for different things. I use music because it's something that is very special to me. So I would say anyone who wants to get into the space of using things to relax you, if you have a like something that you like to watch that's from your childhood, nostalgia, this is something that nobody talks about, but nostalgia actually does create um, dopamine in your mm -hmm. system. So when you watch things or hear things that remind you of a better place in your childhood or something that you really love, it immediately, like, it, it disarms you when it comes to being like watered up. So I like to watch a lot of things from the nineties because you know I'm a nineties gal. That's like why my TV shows? Hmm? like TV shows. Yes. Um. So you know my my channel is Fly Girls Manifesting. Uh, Fly Girls is from in Living Color. The Fly Girls were like these dancers that had this beautiful fashion. They were fly. They they were, you know, fabulous. So the name always reminds me of like my childhood. But I watch my favorite TV shows from the 90s when things oh, like yeah. I'm feeling crazy and out of place. I'm like, you know what? Let me just get a bowl of, you know, ramen noodle and sit in a bit and just watch my favorite, you know, shows from my childhood. That actually does help to relax you. If you're going yeah. about your day and let's just say you're at work and you're getting like stressed out, excuse yourself to the bathroom. This is what I used to do. I just put on like a five minute meditation five minutes in the yeah. bathroom can reset yourself you know these yeah. are things i used to do because despite your 3d circumstances your your 3d circumstances don't care that you don't like your your nine to five because your focus and awareness is what's creating your reality so figure out a way to relax yourself i do exercise i watch my favorite tv shows from my childhood I do breath work, like I breathe. I take time throughout the day to breathe. These things take you like, they don't take you a lot of time to do. On your days off, watch your favorite TV shows, listen to your favorite music. On um, Sorry, My cat is like getting into this box right now. But yes, I, I, let me just, let me just get, him, get his ass out of here. <laughs> what are you doing, little kitty? <laughs> <sighs> That, this looks like my cat. It's she, this right she, here. This is hey, the culprit boy. right here. That's a that's a boy. Yeah. Oh, hey, his little boy. I, I saw what you get manifested. Yeah, yeah. You saw like little videos of him when he was a kitten. Now yeah, come big. Oh my god, he's got so bad. Yeah. Okay, like you can always edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> this is not. Yeah, I can, but yeah, no. Like, I love, I love what you're saying because um. <laughs> I I used to do that too. Like when I was just like any any job that I've had before, I would sometimes just like, yeah, like take a second, pause, go put yeah. my headphones in, go listen to like some yeah. relaxing music, go listen to like anything at the time that I was listening to, you know, a YouTuber that I liked at the time probably. Yeah. I actually used to listen to like 
back in this at this time this was a while ago so i'd listen to like infinite waters i don't know if you know who yes, he is on I youtube love <laughs> I, shows because I used to love his videos yes i used to do yeah. anything that the, just get myself out of the woe is me you know yeah. thoughts you know, right. yeah. so you were asking me what I do to like actually get myself out of, you know, or just like to um, consistently keep myself focused. I do anything I can to make myself feel good. Anything I can or just like if I'm having a bad day or somebody pisses me off, I'm like, nope. <laughs> no. Yeah, I redirect my energy. I redirect mm -hmm. my thoughts and my inner conversations. I don't curse people out of my mind. I don't right. like say, oh, this is stupid. No, because remember, those things are creating um, feelings and emotions that your subconscious mind is. I, I don't know if you, you know, noticed by now with me talking to you, and I'm pretty sure you do, is um, I really do believe that the subconscious mind can be easily reprogrammed just with consistency of deciding that you're not going to do the old stuff that you were doing and just decide that each and every day you're going to show up as your new desired reality I new know. thoughts new words new ways of doing things new routines and give yourself grace in doing that so that's the way that i really would approach doing any type of meditation or my techniques my techniques are affirmations or affirmations and stay akin to sleep falling asleep yeah. in a wish <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and you mentioned that like earlier so i guess with all of that being said like we've talked a bit about the affirmations and stuff and for for your status can the sleep do you have a specific kind of way that you use to get into that or is it kind of just whatever you feel like in the moment yeah no. i'd be really curious to hear about that okay so i make state can sleep very simple especially for my class that they think it's like this weird like technique you're supposed to i'm like no i know when you start Okay, so this is what I do. Let's just say it's 8 p.m. I okay. go to sleep around like 11. Right. Let's say around 8 p.m. I'm like, okay. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, I want to go to sleep around like 10 p.m. Let's just say I was at work and I know I have to get off at 11 p.m. So when I get home, because I should do say to Kent to sleep even as a nine to five worker. So it's a little bit different when you have time to yourself versus when you're getting off of work. 30 minutes before I know that I want to go to sleep, I say, okay, what do I want to manifest? What do I want to saturate my subconscious mind with? I make a decision. It could be anything, you know, you could saturate your mind with anything. And then the next day you could start seeing results because as you're falling asleep in that theta state and your subconscious mind is wide open, mm -hmm. the snapshot of what you desire to have can penetrate with no resistance to your subconscious. And mm -hmm. now it is done. Yeah, if you really don't. It can be like a five second or a ten second or just a snapshot. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out. So for me, thirty minutes before I know I'm going to sleep, or just when I know I'm getting drowsy, my night routine is very important because it's the most optimal time for you to saturate and press your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So what do you want? What do you desire? What? How do you want to feel? And yeah, so I guess like let's let's kind of um, use an example just to like okay. get get it clear clear and clarity. And I mean, we were talking about this earlier, right? But like, I guess like how like the the kind of affirmations we were using earlier, of like mm -hmm. why am I just kind of like able to serve so many people? Why do I have such an amazing relationship with my yeah. audience? Why am I connecting with so many people? Why am I connecting with my higher self? Kind of that, like intuition around creativity, yeah. I guess. Let's go with that as the example. Okay, so the example is that, you know, the affirmation tape, the re how mm -hmm. I use it, the facts. So basically, yeah. I was I asked the question, how can I serve more people? What's missing in my niche? What's missing in the community since affirmations are very popular right now? Okay, well, I've been using them for years. So how can I serve more people? And that was the number one thing I asked myself, my intention. Number one, I set an intention. And then as I fell asleep, I'll never forget the day. I put a pillow. Obviously, I'm in my second room. This is at my office, but there's a bed right here. So I sleep in my office sometimes. Yeah. I was like, okay. I imagine myself speaking in front of people. That was my original 10-second 
and that it was like thousands of people because my affirmation was, why am I reaching thousands and thousands of people through my meditations? Why am I reaching thousands and thousands of people through my meditation? Yeah. How did I do that? How did I get to do that? And so said, so done, my subconscious mind gave me a download to put out an affirmation. I said, okay, well, there's nobody doing an affirmation meditation. But before I made the, the affirmation MP3, I asked a question. Mm-hmm. Insats means that I was drowsy in a state akin to sleep. As I fell asleep, the next day I got up and I said, okay, I'm going to make a meditation. What should it be? Isn't it wonderful? That's the, that's in the, I'm in the law of assumption community. Isn't it wonderful? Nobody has a meditation for that right now with affirmations as the main. It only took me literally five seconds falling asleep to ask the question. And when I woke up, I got the answer. So what yeah, I was saying to everyone who is looking to fall asleep in the state of can to sleep, when you're using affirmations is to ask a question. And as you're falling asleep, accept that your question will be answered by your higher self. Does that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So I guess like my question about that then was like, if so, you when once you asked the question, is that when you kind of had that visualization when you were asleep that you were speaking and there was thousands of people hearing you? What was that visual? I guess what was your scene like? Was it was it literally you on a stage with thousands of people hearing you? Or I created the scene. I created the scene, and I guess my subconscious mind—the only thing that it could like correlate the me speaking to thousands and thousands of people was, well, okay, the. The path of least action wasn't mm-hmm. me standing in front of a stage. It was right, actually right. the path of least action was me making a meditation tape to reach thousands of people. Mm-hmm. So even if I imagine myself on stage with thousands of people, my subconscious mind figured out, okay, well, how can we get it to where it is thousands of people? But the path of least resistance, what path would I have to take to actually exactly. book, yeah. a, a book something to stand in front of people? Versus a stage of social media, virtually, mm-hmm. it's instant. Yeah. So my subconscious mind instantly gave me the best case scenario of me reaching a thousand people, even though I visualized me standing on a stage. The best case scenario, the, the fastest way to get to that was a virtual stage. Right. And that's, yeah, that that's is- subconscious mind works. It'll give you the fastest, the easiest way to your desire when you release and let go of the resistance and accept that it is yours. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So, um, with that being said, so like that was your scene, was it, was it kind of like a looping scene and you, did you drift asleep as the scene was happening or how did that process kind of go for you? I said it within 10 seconds, within 10 seconds, literally, um, I said, I'm reaching thousands and thousands of people or why, why is it that I'm reaching thousands and thousands of people? I love the fact that I'm reaching thousands and thousands of people. I'm helping thousands and thousands of people. Why is it? I, I asked, like, mm-hmm. how come my channel is reaching thousands and thousands of people? How can I help yeah. thousands and thousands of people? Like something yeah. in that variation as I was falling asleep. And I just said it now in less than five seconds. Yeah. And as and I you kind of just. Yeah. You felt the feeling of what, of like, why am I doing, why is it feel basically so good? Isn't it wonderful that I'm reaching as many people and you kind of drifted off to sleep as you were kind yeah. of looping those affirmations, right? Yeah. And a like com- I said, the, the with- visualization of me standing on stage that had already been created. But the fact that as I was falling asleep, me saying it and, and also having the visual mm-hmm. was just like the, the icing on the cake. Yeah. So are you, are you are you telling me to tell your audience like if I were to say how to loop a scene, if you're not good at visualizing, just use the inner conversation and loop it. Just mm-hmm. loop it and feel as if you already have it as best as you can, as best as you can. If you're good at visualizing, see yourself doing something, the end result of it. The end result. Yeah. Like 
reaching. Like you can see like your, your channel going viral. You can see, you know, the money that you want in your bank account. Go to the end result as you're falling asleep, whether you love to visualize or whether you are better at like hearing mm-hmm. an air conversation because you can do both to manifest. Yeah. Cause like, I think that for a lot of people probably like asking the question or making the statement, will then cause some sort of imagery to come to mind, right? So if it's like, why am I reaching so many so many people? Or if it's like, why am I so in touch with my creativity? Or why is my business becoming so successful? Mm-hmm. Then if you, when you keep asking yourself those questions, the mind, like we said before, has to come up with some sort of answer. So even if you're mm-hmm. thinking of the verbal answer or the dialogue in your mind, well, maybe it's because I've found a pro- process that really works for me for my creativity yeah. or because I time blocked this time during the day or because I figured out how to set up my online store correctly or my lead magnet is working and I'm building my yeah. email list or something like this right mm-hmm. whatever like your mind will just start to fill in the gaps and then you can begin to imagine those scenes so in the case like you mentioned you know, why am I reaching so many people? Why are, why am I helping thousands and thousands of people? And your mind comes up with this, this scene of you on like stage delivering a message to thousands of people, but then it's like, it converts it. And like, maybe there was, there was other, at certain points, you probably had other visualizations too, that were like, maybe of you even recording meditations or of you even creating something. I don't know if you did or not, but I I want to say that and not to interrupt you, but I didn't have um, visualizations of me recording because remember, I have a, a background in like, I guess my my subconscious mind supports the idea mm-hmm. that my voice, um, I didn't have any resistance to using my voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but guess what? What I was able to do, like you're saying, is my intention, my deep burning desire overrode like anything else. And then just the visualizations or the inner conversations supported my subconscious reprogramming. If you understand what I'm saying, like if people want to reprogram the subconscious mind to do anything, understand like what is your intention with saying the affirmations or the affirmations, because your subconscious mind is very sophisticated. It knows the stuff that you don't think it knows because it's been recording since the time that you were born. But Mm -hmm. when you are looking to reprogram yourself, just assume the state of already having it and your subconscious mind will do the work to bring it into your 3D reality a lot quicker than trying to go back and figure out why you don't have it. No, just say, this is who I am. This is my new reality. This is my new story. Consistently put yourself in the thoughts and the reality, even with state of cancer sleep fall asleep and just knowing that it's yours, boom, I saw the the vision of it or I heard the inner conversation. When you wake up the next day, you don't doubt, you don't waver. You just go about your day as if it's already yours. The naturalness of this is already mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was that inner conversation for you like then regarding like the The conversation was, I'm so thankful that I'm now living in my desired reality. Man, can you believe this, Danielle? Remember when, like, you didn't have this, but now, and I used to remember techniques. Mm-hmm. But um, just remember, like, the time where, like, you were looking to manifest your desired reality. Look at how far you've come. Look at look at your reality. You did it, girl. You did it. I talked to myself in a very natural way. Yeah. Dan, look at you. You did it. Three years mm-hmm. ago, look there, and look now. You have it now. Everything you yeah. said that you were going to do, it came into fruition. That's how I talk to myself in inner mm-hmm. conversation. I I tell myself, like, look, look at what happened, even if it hasn't happened yet. Let's just say I want to be a millionaire. Danny, can you believe you're a millionaire now? Yeah. Well, look at you. I, look look at, yeah. look at how far you've come. Look at all the things that you said you were going to do. Look at all the scripting you did. Now, I may not be a millionaire yet, but I'm projecting myself into the desired reality by focusing on the inner conversations that would imply that I already have it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I guess like, cause a lot of people do have kind of resistance around the money area. 
would you recommend like using the ask formation technique for that? Or like say that people are, you know, on the path trying to create their own business and have their business success. What's kind of, what would you recommend for those, for people? Like, honestly, I would say to start with knowing that um, anything that you add value to, you're going to be compensated for it in your own way. So if you like paper yeah. notes, if you like bartering, if you were to just focus on value, yeah, value, that's what I started to focus on when it came to getting more money in my life. I was like, okay, how can I be of value to myself? Give more value to myself, value, 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 more gratitude, more gratitude. The more you focus on being thankful for things, the more you'll see that you'll have more things to be grateful for. But um, I definitely, with the money, I was just like, okay, this is a funny topic because I had a lot of resistance around manifesting money in the beginning until I realized that, wait, if I'm giving my time and my energy and I'm really focused on serving people, that has no choice but to come back to me because everything is reciprocity. Whatever you put out and you focus on people will give it back to you. So I just really had to release the resistance of clocking in and getting the check versus creating creating value like what you're doing on your channel. You create value. Mm -hmm. And in your everyday life, you create value. People have no choice but to be drawn to the value that you're creating. So I just created more value in my life. I said, okay, I want to be a mindset of manifestation coach. Who's ready? <laughs> I just decided. Yeah. Okay. I want to do social media management. Who can I help? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to help people in different areas. I just decided I made a decision that I'm giving value and I deserve to be, re um, to, to have reciprocity towards me. So the only thing I can tell you is that like, when you don't know which way to go, when it comes to money, choose giving value and people will like, literally they'll just be itching and scratching to, buy your, your products and services mm -hmm. because they're like, well, Hey, what is it about this person that makes me so drawn to like join their, this, or to buy their, mm -hmm. that versus like, please, yeah. please, please give it to me universe. Or please like people can like smell desperateness mm -hmm. when you're doing like business or whenever you're like needing money, money yeah. is literally it's um, an equivalent to, what you feel you like, worth or like, what you feel that like you energy. can add. Yeah, it's energy. energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um and I do think that what you're saying is is definitely true. I mean you can see it in every, in any business, like people are compensated in proportion to the value they're be they're able to create. Um with more types of different products like being in informational products that can be and and really just like there is no hard set amount of value. I was listening to this guy talking about this earlier on anything. It's just how how worth it is to the is it to the person that you're giving it to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could have like a wealthy person yeah. and you help them quit drinking because they're an alcoholic. And on one hand, like that could be somebody going to free AA meetings and be like, yeah. oh, I shouldn't pay money to that, but to that guy who may be a multimillionaire or whatever, he would happily pay thousands and thousands of dollars, if yeah. even ten thousand dollars more, fifty, hundred thousand dollars, if you're able to resolve mm -hmm. that problem for him, like finally and completely. So a lot of it has to do with yeah, like your value that you're putting out, and then you also like getting rid of those kind of limiting beliefs. I think that say, hey, yeah. like money doesn't grow on trees, like all these limiting beliefs we've had around money. Um, and yeah. just like thinking that we need to trade so much of our time for money. Cause one thing that I've been wanting to focus on recently is kind of like creating digital products, whether it's books, whether it's courses and things like that, that can be like scaled, scaled up and just not trading time for money so much. Although I do definitely see value in, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and doing like other forms of, of kind of like that. But mm -hmm. go ahead. I didn't know if you were if you were going to say something. Off of no, that. because when you said like um, trading your time, look, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this about me, but like 
it's been very easy over the course of your uh, course of the two years that I've been doing like um, mindset and manifestation coaching to actually venture out into having multiple sources of income. Mm-hmm. And what I have found too is that I've been working smarter, not harder. And it was easier for me to hit like six figures or um, my first 10 K month of the year in 2024, um, January, 2024. And I'm just like, how did I get here? <laughs> but I do yeah. know how I got here because I created an atmosphere where I just told myself that I get to have a business that I show up each and every day to that serves my spirit, but serves others in a way that they're more than willing to pay my fee. Mm-hmm. So I had an issue with raising my prices. And that's a mm-hmm. self up issue. You know, I was just yeah. like, oh, who's going to pay me this? People talk about, you know, coaches and scamming. But I was just like, you have to clear out all the clutter. Because remember, I'm really big on just focusing. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, well, how can you be of service to other people where if you charge them this, that, or the third, as long as you're giving them value, they won't have an issue with what your, your, your money is. Right. And I figured that out. And then, so the first person who was able to like pay me what I actually asked for, I was like, wait, you. so this person was just like, okay, where's the link? I was yeah. like, because for so long, I was like, nobody's going to pay me that amount. But then I was right. like, well, hey, but they should, because the value that I'm offering, they're going to get so much out of it. So I changed my percept my, my perception about and my self-concept about what people will pay me versus like what I'm willing to offer them. And I was just like, no, this is a steal. Mm-hmm. This is a steal because I'm going to give yeah. you everything that I know. So I changed my like verbiage about business or just about what I deserved when it came to the value that I offered to people. And then that's how my business was able to like scale up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's super interesting. Type of energy that it was like negative or anything. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just like really interesting to me that, I mean, like what we're talking about here, and in my personal experience, a lot of the time, also people don't value things. First off, if you're giving information for free, people think it's like unsolicited advice or whatever. Like to your family members, yeah. they don't. Not only do they not value it, they're kind of just annoyed by it. But I think mm. like that also goes for very like low, like like just very cheap, cheap products or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say that you're selling a course, but you only charge like $30 for it or some, something like really low. People are kind of just like, okay, well, whatever. Like I only paid 30 bucks for this, so I don't really need to follow through or like pay it. I have the way pay attention. And if you charge like actually those higher price points that kind of reflect the amount of time and effort and dedication you put into something, which like for you or I, we've been studying this type of stuff for years and years. And let's say you have something that's like a thousand dollars, whether it's a coaching thing or whatever it might be, it's like, well, now people have made this commitment. Like there's that energetic commitment here on top of it too, that says, Hey, look, like I'm investing this amount into this. And so I better follow through with what I'm being told here, because if I don't, then I'm like, I'm not operating in integrity with myself and my own. And I value that thousand dollars. So I'm not going to just throw it away and not act on the information that I'm getting here. So there's so many different levels. I feel like where it works when terms of like that energetic exchange and and in terms of kind of providing services for people, but doesn't that cover everything in manifestation? Like, just like we're talking about business now, we we transition into that conversation, but it's really with anything. It's with SP. It's with like your health. Like, how much value are you willing to give to yourself when you're looking to change your health? Mm-hmm. How much value are you are you willing to give in self-love to accept the fact that you're SP and you are a mirror of each other? Like, it's like yeah. still value. It's still like the, the, con- the, the, the conception of you're literally receiving a mirror of what you are conceptualizing in your mind, in your imagination. And so everything yeah. that you're doing when it comes to whatever you're looking to manifest, it's literally your thoughts projected on a screen showing you back what we've been working on. And you can could, you could fix that overnight. I feel like you could say, okay, I don't like that. I don't like that. What can I start to do right now to recreate that story or that reality? 
Mm-hmm. You can make a decision today that you're no longer going to play an old story or an old program and then just decide and go through the motions of moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Because you mentioned digital products and I was just like, oh my goodness, I could so see you doing like a course. You are like fabulous. And I don't, I know this is like a girl term, but that's the only <laughs> way I can describe you. Like you're amazing. Like I'm just oh, like, so I can hear the authority in your voice. Like when you would teach anything in a course, I'd be like, okay, I'm all ears. <laughs> because you are definitely somebody that I'm like, you're not bullshitting people. Um, you have not had a history of doing gimmicky stuff. You literally just get online and you teach people the truth. And yeah, people need to hear more of you. So I think like doing any type of digital courses or selling things, mm. people want to pay you what you're worth because your your voice is solid. You don't have well, any thank you so much. Around. Yeah, you're like you're, yeah, you're no, I appreciate that a lot. I mean, yeah, I think part of it for me, like just the hesitancy of putting things out. I do have like an ebook, a free ebook that I created um that I have available for people. Unfortunately, the the I was using Koji and Koji I guess got bought by Linktree so that they like deleted the the link doesn't exist. I have to find a new place to host it. Besides the point, we gotta, but basically we gotta talk this because I, I I I do this for a living, you know that, right? Like I I okay, so we got to talk off the line because I have I have something that I think I'll help you with. Yeah, okay. Not- yeah, that yeah, that would be sweet because like I know there's a bunch of different places you can host stuff. But anyways, um, other than that free book, I haven't put out anything else yet. I think because partly like I want to make sure it's like really, really good. Like, yeah, I think my robotic affirming video like got as many views as it as it did because I made it so like comprehensive. And so yeah. any book or anything that I want to do, I want to make sure it's like completely comprehensive. So I put a poll out recently asking people what types of books or ebooks people would be interested in and a lot of people said like one on mastering robotic affirming another one people said like one on mastering vis- visualization yes. but i don't know like if people realize the amount of time and effort that i actually do like for example to create that robotic affirming video or that mm-hmm. i would do to put in to create this comprehensive ebook so that people can Absolutely. really just have everything that they need to know about that topic so <clears throat> you know it's it's a kind of work in the process mm-hmm. i am kind of working on those things but yeah I, I really appreciate you saying that because it's been something that i want to do so you you know having your co-sign <laughs> is gonna help maybe boost and inspire me and motivate me to get that out there um and i can say the same for you like i know that you kind of have like more of that like feminine energy and so like i'm sure that there's a lot of women that look to you with like mm-hmm. wow like she has like so much authority behind what she's saying um, with your brand and everything too. And I just, I'm, I'd be curious, actually, do you get like for your coaching, do you get like a mix of men and women or is it more women or how's that? Yes. This, even, even though, um, I exude a lot of feminine energy, I believe yeah. in like, um, balance. So yeah. um, with my coaching, I hate to say it, but you see how sweet my voice sounds. If you do <laughs> coaching with me, especially business coaching in my group membership, yeah. I'm like fire and ice. Like, I'm going to mm-hmm. be calm, cool with you. And I'm going to be like, hey, you said you're going to do this. What's going on? So right. um, I have a cool fire about me that people, yeah. they appreciate because they don't just want people just to be like, okay. Remember when yeah, you call exactly. yourself? Yeah, you coaches, need that from a coach. You need to be held accountable. People. Like they can't just coddle their teams. They have to actually, no. when they see a team member that's slacking a little bit, you just pull them aside and say, hey. Um, I noticed this about you. So, hey, I'm here to help you. What can I do to get you back on track? And I really right. do love being that person for a lot of the people in my membership because it's like, hey, I'm not perfect. So who motivates the mo- uh, who, who motivates the coach? For me, um, what motivates me is my passion. So, and my husband, sometimes he'd be like, hey. But other than that, like, I, I'm really good at motivating myself. I don't really need anybody to motivate me. Because guess yeah. what? If I don't show up for my clients or for my group members, then it crumbles. So I just, I go to my higher self. I meditate. And I just, I only focus on my purpose. And I ask for energy, strength, and good health. Good health to <laughs> serve people. But what you're talking about, and I'm I'm being so honest with you, is, you know, 
when you're looking to give products and services to people and you're putting all this energy into making sure that it's great, I feel like that's what's going to really be like when you look back, like, damn, I did that. Like that was something that people are going to buy. They're going to purchase because they understand that this is not just some little flimsy thing that you did. You took yeah. the time and energy to put it together. So yeah, the masculine and the feminine energy that I have on my channel, even though I am a very mask, I'm um, sorry, I'm a very feminine woman. Um, I do balance the masculine, and so I do have men that um into my yeah. coaching. And you know, oh, yeah. they, when they into like, if I've done coaching, they're just like, I'm glad that I was able to do coaching with you because it's nice to hear a woman tell me that I'm not crazy. A lot of men want to just hear that they're not crazy about their thoughts or, you know, mm-hmm. hey, I'm affirming this, but can you help me with this? And I'm like, yes, you need the, the balance of the masculine and the fem- feminine. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. And I think that any like powerful, effective person in the world definitely has that balance. And I could say that for you as well, because like that masculine is, is like you said, it's that like decisive, decisiveness and like yes. being like, look, you need this, you need this. And that feminine, though, is like that great just intuition, just like knowing, like re- receiving the downloads, like being able to know what to do. And then the yeah. masculine kind of like is like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> I feel no, like, just think about it, Alex. If you were just laying in the bed all day, like, okay, and then like doing all the feminine stuff, but it's like spirits <laughs> tapping and saying, okay, let's meet me halfway with the action. That mm-hmm. I feel like it's a beautiful dance of masculine and feminine energy where you're doing just enough meditation and affirming and knowing with your intuition and you're doing just enough um, action and getting on the, the computer and researching or writing yeah. something down or reaching out to a person that you want to work with. That is the beauty of balancing the, the, the dance of masculine and feminine energy, which is creation. Creation yeah. is masculine and feminine. It is exactly. There you go. Yeah. That's a bomb right there. It just dropped. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's like uh it's one of the principles too, and like the hermetic principles. I'm a big fan. Yes, of me like too. All of those, because that's just so foundational. I feel like when I learned about that, I was just like, okay, this just makes so much sense. Yeah, the, but, the seven hermetic principles are are phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess we're like, you know, closing in on this hour here. Um yes. And I just so like to to go off these points too with your coaching that's open on your channel and is it like you said you do group coaching is it like a community yeah. or how how does it usually okay so I have a group coaching program called the Sweet Spot membership and basically it's a collective group of people who like to study the law of assumption law of attraction the seven hermetic principles anything metaphysical to keep Mm -hmm. them in alignment with their desires. So I keep them on track with meditations. We have workshops, masterclasses. We have a WhatsApp group that I'm in there all the time, like a group chat that's encouraging. But the main thing about my um, Sweet Spot membership is that when you join, you are literally only going to be focusing on living in the vision of who you know that you are. So I get you to unravel all those limiting beliefs around what you can have and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, what can we do to get you to live in the wish fulfilled? What can we do each and every day with your daily routines to get you to actually understand that you are the operant power that every day that you wake up, you are now in the new reality. You're shedding away the old story. You're dying to the old story. And so I think with group coaching, the reason why I love it is because one session with me would be great. But what about having a consecutive month with me? Mm -hmm. Months with me. There are people that have been in my membership for six months, you know, and it's $20 a month. It's not that expensive. It's, but it's such a collective community. And so what I have found is that I've gotten more results with having group coaching and showing up, you know, throughout the weeks and the days. And um, it's because I really truly believe that when people make a decision that they want to change your life, Watching one YouTube video is great. Watching Alex is amazing. Now, what are you going to do, though, when you watch Alex's video? What are you going to do? Are you going to implement the things that he's telling you to do? Do you need accountability? My group membership gives you accountability with a supportive group of like-minded people. 
Yeah, so, that's um, awesome. I'm into group membership more so than one on one. You can still do one on one, but I like my group membership a lot. Yeah, no, but- I I think that there's a lot of value in group group things because I think that like a lot of the time the questions like I've been in group coaching before, not even for manif like manifesting necessarily, just in different spheres, and it's like sometimes people will ask a question that's like their question might not be the same as yours, but the way that the coach answers it, you're like, Oh wow. Yeah. Like this actually answered like a different question I had, or it kind of answered yeah. my question in a different way than I would have asked it. And it's really actually like very illuminating on a lot of different things. I feel like it's more valuable in that way because you get to hear all these other perspectives, all these other issues that other people are dealing with. And you can be like, Oh wow. Okay. I can apply this answer in this way. Yeah. Um, and it kind of like allows you to almost do a little co- coaching yourself too, because sometimes somebody asks a question, but you already know the answer to it. And you're, you kind of maybe go back and forth with the coach and be like, Hey, like what, have, what about this? Do you think this would work mm-hmm. too? And yeah, I, th- I like that a lot. So, uh, that's awesome. So yeah. So with that being said, um, it's been great talking to you. I'm going to leave like the links to your channel as well as where people can go if they if they're interested in signing up for coaching and all that with you down below in the description. And yeah, I am like really stoked that we had this conversation and I would love to hear more. I guess once we end the call, we can talk a little, we can chat for a little bit more. Yes. And can I just say, Alice, thank you so much for inviting me. Like as soon as you asked, I was like, it was literally I saw your email and I read, I was like, yes. It was literally less than <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I've been admiring your content for a very long time. Can I just say this to you? You can edit this out if you want to, but you're one of the more, and I'm saying this as I'm getting chills, you're one of the more authentic, non clickbaity people in the niche of like personal development, law of assumption, law of attraction, all that stuff. Um, I really did connect with you on an energetic level and I watch everything that you do. And I wow. am better for it. So thank you so much for allowing me on your platform. Well, thank you, Danny. Like I was also just thinking about like people that I wanted to kind of get a conversation going with because mm-hmm. people had expressed interest. I've had a couple people um, that I've talked to before, but I was like, yeah, Danny would actually be somebody really cool to interview because we we've, we've talked in the comments before. We've mm-hmm. talked and like left comments on each other's videos and uh you know, every time I watch one of your videos too, I get the same type of feeling that it's just, yeah, not coming from a place of being clickbaity, not coming from a place of anything else than like what you're saying, like what you are telling, like you, you practice what you preach, which is like, I really do see you out here as like a light and you know, people are, are, are better for having listened. You, it's visible. You can see on the comments on Danny's, <laughs> Danny's affirmation tapes, like people are getting real success listening, listening to her. And she is definitely a positive spirit in this space. And so with that being said, I really appreciate you being on the channel. And and yeah, uh, guys, let us know down below in the comments if you have any questions regarding the interview. Either I or her will be happy to respond to some of them. And drop us a like, hit me with a subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.